Alright guys, I'm going to be honest, I was shocked when I saw that the Link Ray Tower is getting repeated. I, I was absolutely blown away. I was looking at it, I was like, why? They usually repeat this tower during winter time and now it's summertime. It is literally the beginning of the hottest summer, the end of June, the beginning of July. Uh, so I have no idea why they did repeat the Link Ray Tower, but it doesn't matter. This video is going to be about the Linkway Tower in general. This Linkway Tower can be refreshed four times according to their message box that they sent yesterday. I never even played a single battle because this tower is worthless for my account. I have all the gear maxed out, I have all Sub-Zeros maxed out, so I don't really care. However, I would like to go through the rewards and everything so I can give you an advice whether you should be going after this tower. When it comes to the general reward, I wouldn't say that either of those Sub-Zeros are exceptional apart from MK11 Sub-Zero who is pretty pretty good. Circle of Shadow Sub-Zero is good, but nothing, nothing exceptional. Cold Sub-Zero is good, but nothing exceptional. The only really good card is MK11 Sub-Zero. Unfortunately, I don't know the chances, so I cannot really tell you what is the chance to get either of those cards. But, yeah, if you're a fan of Sub-Zero, go ahead and grind the tower. However, the beautiful thing about uh, this tower is actually that uh, you can refresh it so many times that you get a lot of gear in the process, especially when it comes to the green pieces. And this tower has very good green pieces. If you don't know, the Quailiang Bracers, super, super good. It is, by the way, the only green accessory that is part of a Brutality set. It was the very first Brutality set ever released in MK Mobile. In case you didn't know, it was Sub-Zero's Brutality uh, that was released with Linkway Tower. It was the very first Brutality that we ever got in the game. Anyways, it gives 40% damage uh, at basic attack damage boost, which is not really great, but the beautiful thing happens on Fusion 10. 20% chance to apply freeze when an opponent blocks basic attack. So it's something like Kano's passive. However, instead of stun, you have freeze. Uh, so in a, in a way, you can use that if you cannot break the enemy block. For instance, the enemy has this unblockable attack reduction. And if you're punching the enemy, you will never break the block. Then you can use this piece in order to freeze the enemy. And this will guarantee that you're going to sooner or later eventually break that block. So super useful piece, however, only at Fusion 10. We are going to the next piece, which is the Ice Bomb, one of the very best uh, green tower pieces in the game. At Fusion 10, it gives 20% power generation boost, which is incredible. Literally, every character will benefit from that. And look at this, 100% chance to apply freeze to the active enemy at the start of the match. This will not only make sure that you always be having the first, uh, you always draw first blood in the <laughs> in a fight, let's call it that way, but will also save you from characters such as, for instance, Circle of Shadow Lucane that apply uh, stun in the beginning of the game, so it doesn't matter whether you're stunned, as long as he's frozen, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. So again, exceptionally good piece, however, only at Fusion 10. We're going to the next green piece, which is the Frozen Money. 100% resistance to Frostbite and reduced, uh, reduced power cost of all special attacks. This is probably the worst green piece because it's super, super situational. In a lot of cases, you need the resistance to Frostbite, but in the general case, uh, you won't really need it that much. Definitely, it's worth going to Fusion 10 because of the 100% resistance to Frostbite. Granted, if you get it all the way to 80, it's going to be enough because we all have the Hoax 10 talent that gives us 20. So with another 80, it will go to 100 anyways. Now, the drawback of this tower uh, and the Achilles heel of this tower is actually the, um, the blue pieces because they're all underwhelming. They're not super bad, like you can use them, especially the Frost Axe, but they're not incredible uh, compared to other green pieces, I'm sorry, blue pieces. Basic attack damage boost, come on, 50%. I mean, this is also only good if you want to build some kind of a Troll team that relies on tagging in all the time and you want to boost the tagging attack because the basic attack damage boost is also applied on a tagging attack damage, if you didn't know. 50% chance to apply strength on the owner after freezing an opponent, just okay. 50% opponent critical hit chance reduction. So it's a kind of a defensive type of defensive and offensive mixture here, but none of these stats is super, super great. The Frost Axe is decent, 80% basic attack damage boost against enemies affected by Frostbite. Uh, then we have the 50% chance to apply Frostbite on Special Attack 1, which is pretty good for Sub-Zero, and the 50% basic attack and blockable chance. So give this to Sub-Zero at Fusion 10, it's going to be a pretty good gear. Apart from that, it isn't really one of the very, very best pieces in the game. Still, though, probably the best rare piece uh, from the Link Quake Tower. The Cryomancer armor, though, is pretty good because you can use it at Fusion 0. At maximum Fusion, it gives you Ice armor for 25 seconds. I believe at Fusion 0, it gives you for 15 seconds. So it's still pretty cool. You can give this to your starter and make sure that even if the enemy starts with an X-ray, you're going to more or less soak the damage and be 
get away with it without anything. So it's pretty, pretty cool. The thing that you unlock at Fusion 10 is laughable. 25% chance to reflect 25% basic damage. That's super bad. I'm sorry, but that's super bad. Anyways, um, then we are going to the epics. Now the Frost Mask. We are going to start with this one. The Frost Mask is pretty effective if you want to use it uh, on a Sub-Zero. And in general, if you want to use it uh, in a team that relies on auto combat. Every single time when you see your opponent unblockable attack chance reduction, more or less this piece is designed for auto combat. I'm not saying that it's going to be totally worthless if you use it on yourself, if you're playing actively. But in the general case, you won't be blocking that often. So definitely, this piece is for the AI that is blocking literally all the time. And the Frostbite in the middle of the match is pretty, pretty cool. Not going to lie. Um, so the Frost Mask is a very good piece of equipment. Unfortunately, it starts working really good at High Fusion. The Frost Orb, though, in my opinion, the absolute very best epic piece here when it comes to free-to-play, because even at Fusion Zero, it can save you. Basically, it says, once per fight, spawn an Ice Clone that will save the user from a knockout blow. Uh, and there's a chance the Ice Clone will explode and apply Frostbite. But the general case is you unlock that piece and you can give it to whoever character you have, and the character is going to get resurrected, unless you have that mark. Generally, one of the very best pieces for free to play because of the best effect out of it, the, the saving, uh, works at Fusion Zero. The Quarry Blade is a very good piece of gear. Unfortunately, again, once you stack up the fusions, if you have a Fusion Zero, Fusion One, it's not that great. Fusion Ten, it is pretty, pretty decent in my opinion. Probably top 20 best epics in the game. Very underrated, but very powerful. However, only at high fusion. And the Quietly Acceptor, again, you can use it at low fusion, but it's becoming super useful when it's at least, let's say, Fusion 5, Fusion 6, because the um, chance of little blow increases. And if you get it to 100, I'm sorry, not to 100, Fusion 10, you get 1.5 bars of starting power, 100% little blow chance against enemies affected by freeze. So as long as they're frozen, you're going to hit them, and the hit is going to be a little hit. And then we have 100% chance to apply bleed when hitting an opponent affected by freeze. One of the very best pieces in the game. Unfortunately, again, only great at Fusion 10. If you don't have a Fusion 10, it's good, but not really amazing. If I have to summarize the very best piece for free-to-play players, or to players that don't spend a lot out of the Apex is the Frost Orb, because you can get the effect at Fusion 0. The Crown Master Armor is pretty useful at Fusion 0 as well. The Frost Axe, probably the very best overall uh, rare piece out of the three in the Linkway Tower. And when it comes to the greens, you have to go ahead and Max the Ice Bomb and the Kwai Liang Bracers. And this is the reason why I would advise you to go ahead and start um, basically clearing this tower as many times as possible. The tower will be here for about two weeks and a half. So if you have the greens in Fusion 3, Fusion 4, something, go ahead and refresh the tower as many times as possible so that you can max those two greens. I'm talking about uh, the Ice Bomb. We already established that the Ice Bomb is one of the very best green pieces in the game. It is super useful, guys. Trust me. Once you have it maxed out, you're going to be using all the time, more or less in any fight. It's super, super useful. Uh, so you need to max the Ice Bomb and you need to max the Kwai Liang Bracers. Those two, if you can, go ahead and refresh the tower until you can max them. The rest, don't worry that much, but the Ice Bomb and the Kwai Liang Bracers must be Fusion 10. Alright guys, so I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you're asking when the next update is going to be, I don't know, but usually, usually the update drops after the end of the uh, second season. Uh, and as you can tell, um, as I can tell, you, we have like 16 days left until the update, so that's two weeks. Probably the update is going to drop around uh, July the 14th, something like this. Usually the update drops on Wednesday, so if I have to uh see that if i have to guess the update will probably drop uh on um, on the 18th of july but i'm i'm just speculating i'm sorry on the 17th so either on the 10th or on the 17th i don't think it's going to be on the 10th so it should be on the 17th so two more weeks we can take it we can take it see you next time guys take care perfect